A pleasant evening to all. Well, I thought I can just start with a small story. There was once a girl who, at the tender age of two and three quarters, had a new friend. Her play, um, sorry, her pair of glasses. Fascinating, huh? Little did she know that as she grew, so did the friend thicken. Not friendship, but the friend. Well, she went on to live an ordinary life just like every other child. When, at the sensitive age of 12, her ophthalmologist disclosed to her mother and herself of the girl having acquired retinal degeneration. It was a supposition, however, because they weren't really certain of what the case was. Whatever be the medical jargon, the end result was um, the eye power of the girl gradually deteriorating and settling on utter blackness. The mother shattered, of course, found her solace in tears. The girl, on the other hand, she revealed not the slightest trace of sorrow, horror, or even terror. To her, her thoughts were simply, all right, so? And so did days, months, and even years pass by with her friend. Eventually, one fine day, something strange happened. The letters in her books blurred out. The lighter shades of color started turning white, and those of the darker shades became black. After pondering upon this oddity for a while, she came to a conclusion. She decided to explore another faculty of her senses, hearing. She began listening to her mother reading to her all of her lessons. And with the power of listening, she acquired all of her knowledge. She took up her examinations with the help of a scribe. And with undying perseverance, without her stigma being anywhere in her way, she cleared her 12th examinations not only as the school topper, but also as the district rank holder. Well, that was the beginning of her journey. Because the girl was unyielding. She couldn't really give in easily. She was determined to live independently and complete all of whatever she wanted to study. She chose to stand by her decisions and pursue all of what she wanted to study. But was that it? No. She not only went in pursuit of her education, her ambition, but also her passion, her dance. The determination of hers flourished her as an international Bharatanatyam dancer recognized by the government of Tamil Nadu. Well, is this fortunate? Neither did luck favor her, nor did anything just fall on her lap. She and her attitude of fighting strongly for whatever she wants is what helped her achieve her dreams. It's not easy. But time and often, you know, all of us tend to be struck with a zillion of questions if things will work out or not. Is there going to be a possibility or not? Negative thoughts, of course, arose within her mind. But the answers 
to all of those ponderings and wonderings of hers is what led her way. Negative questions does not make a person pessimistic. And mere positive thoughts alone without being prepared for the unexpected, it's not optimism. It is the ability to draw positive answers, even to those negative troubles or mishappenings. That is optimism. And the girl was an embodiment of positivity. Well, life to everyone is not a bed of roses, and definitely not to the girl, because she tripped and fell a good number of times. But each time she fell, she stood with new strength, new spirit, new zeal. And none of her faults really hindered her mental stability because she was headstrong in reaching her destiny. Self-confidence, that's what made her tough. Fine, you have perseverance, determination, optimism, self-confidence. These are all that can mold a person to bring the better of them. But to a person who's fighting stigma of one kind or the other, there's something more. There is a head to all of these elements. The girl was able to pursue her education and her passion. Besides all the odds, despite her impairment, why? The reason being acceptance. She was able to comprehend the situation that was laid forward by the medical expert and had the frame of mind to wholly accept her condition. And that is what helped her stand before you today as Dr. Nivedita Nanjan Radhakrishnan, <laughs> assistant professor of an esteemed institution and an international Bharatanatyam performer. Well, with this slightly lengthier than the otherwise short narration, I really think that each and every one of us are bound to have stigma, encounter it, confront it at all levels. But brooding over the state or complaining of the condition is simply going to take you nowhere. The process of taking the very first step begins in understanding what you can actually do with your life despite the impairment. And the key to that is acceptance. Resistance, anger, and trying to fight the acceptance is only going to pull you backwards or hold you stagnant. If you want to walk ahead, you will have to accept the present state of being. For just remember one thing, impairment is only a part of life. It's not life itself, right? Well, of course, the stigma is going to be in constant struggle with the self, and you're going to have so many challenges to face in every phase of life. But just think, all right? Do you think challenges are there only for those who have stigma? Take, for instance, the challenge of dependence. Do you think only those who have a particular stigma are dependent? Is dependence restricted only to a certain sect of people alone? Not at all. Every single individual, despite of all differences, is dependent in one way or the other. You can't escape it. But there's no need to be ashamed, because dependence is not really going to make you inferior. Taking help is not going to inflict pity or sympathy. On the contrary, it takes immense courage in asking for what you want. So don't be ashamed of being dependent. Again. Tackling such a challenge is possible when the society creates an inclusive, I'm sorry, inclusive environment. Ironically, the more we talk about inclusion, we only tend to exclude. So 
just stop or uh, just forget discussing inclusion. Try acting on its incorporation. May the praxis begin its practice today. On the whole, I would just like to tell you all that once impairment does not make a person different. It's what you do in life, despite that impairment, something that's worthwhile, that makes you singular. One stands out not in terms of your stigma, but to what use the stigma is optimized to in order to attain your dreams. That makes a commoner uncommon. Thank you.